Morning, councillors. Uh, let me begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians on the land on which we gather today. I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging, for they hold the traditions, memories, culture and hopes of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples across this nation. I extend my respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today and recognise their continuing connection to lands, waters and community. I acknowledge their history of wisdom, resilience and survival and respectfully thank them for their contribution to the life of this city and this region. Let me welcome you all to the post-election meeting of the 10th of April 2024. I declare this meeting open at 10am and I would like to advise meeting attendees that this meeting is being webcast and audio recorded. I would also like to give a huge shout out to the Muslim community in Logan who is celebrating Eid al fitr today. So whether you celebrate it, observe it today or tomorrow, Eid Mubarak to the Muslims in Logan. We'll move now to a reflection of faith and I would like to introduce my good friend, Pastor Tony Sori from Impact Church to open the meeting with a reflection of faith. Gallery and councillors, can you please be upstanding if you're able? Thank you, Pastor Tony. I want to begin today by saying a big thank you to uh, Mayor John Raven and congratulate him uh, on this uh, auspicious occasion today, uh, but not only for him, uh, for all councillors elected today, uh, particularly those that are new to the office, uh, congratulations. And I want to say on behalf of the faith community uh, that we are extremely proud of the calibre of mm -hmm. men and women that represent our city. And I also want to say on behalf of the faith community that we want to be part of the answer, not part of the problem. Uh, often the faith community is known for what they're against and uh, we don't want to be that group. We don't want to be the protesters. We want to be the proclaimers of everything that's good, everything that's positive about our city. I love Logan City. That's why I do what I do and have done it for decades. And I know you love Logan City because they can't pay you enough to do what you do. And uh, we are very honoured to have you uh, to serve our city and the constituents of our city, uh, to make decisions with wisdom, integrity, and uh, with the, the foresight to build a creative, beautiful future uh, for the people of our city. We have unprecedented opportunity uh, in our city. This is an occasion to be extremely positive uh, about the future. So we're going to pray today that God will enable you and empower you uh, to do what you do to create the positive, beautiful future that our city des deserves on behalf of our sons, our daughters and future generations. So thank you today uh, for being you. I want you to know the faith community is here for you in any way that we can assist and partner uh, with you. But we look to you and we will cheer you on and support you as our new council. Father, we thank you today for this very important moment as we stand together, Lord, with the leaders of our city, men and women have, who have been voted to run and make decisions for the good of our city. And I pray that they would make decisions with wisdom, they would make decisions with integrity, they would make decisions uh, that would continue to make Logan City a beautiful place to live. We believe for the prosperity of our city. We pray for its favour. We pray we'd be favoured among this state and among this nation. Rather than breaking news being the bad things that happen in our city, that the light would shine in every dark space, in every dark uh, 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 spot that your light would shine, Father. And so I'm thankful today uh, for the men and women uh, that are standing here today to take office, represent our city and work hard. They've been working hard for a long, long time to get to this point. And I pray from this moment on your blessing, your favour upon them as they lead, particularly for our new mayor. We thank you for him and we pray that you would anoint him and we pray that you would bless him as he does what he does to lead our council. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, Pastor Tony. You're welcome to stay with us for the meeting if you're able to, but we completely understand if you have other commitments and you have to leave. Um, we'll now move to attendances and leaves of absence. We have no leaves of absence to record. There will be a motion on the screen to that effect. No, there won't. Cool. The script, the script misleads me. That's okay. The, um, 
We'll move on to declarations of conflicts of interest. Do any councillors have any declarations of conflict of interest they'd like to declare on the council reports we have before us today? There being none, we'll move on to item 6.1, which is the confirmation of the declaration of office for April 2024. I refer to item 6.1 and invite Mr. Darren Scott, Chief Executive Officer, to join discussions. Mr. Scott, you may proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, councillors can't act in office until they've taken the uh, declaration of office. That was taken last Friday, 5th of April 2024. So, this report, item 6.1, is simply uh, to confirm that for the benefit of the public that that has occurred. So I, I propose you go straight to the motion, Mr Mayor, unless there's any particular questions. Councillors, is there any questions or discussion on that one? There being none, there is a motion on the screen. Can I have someone who would move that motion? Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Sorry, I'd like to uh, forward an amended motion. Not yet. Not yet. Next. I'll get to that one. So do you want to second that motion? <laughs> so, this is just to confirm the declaration of office. Moved Councillor Murphy, seconded Councillor Bennon. Can all those in favour please raise their hand? <coughs> that has been carried unanimously. The motion has been carried. Um, councillors will now move on to item 6.2 and Councillor Hall will have his moment to speak about his amended motion in a second. Councillors, today we'll take up the key appointments of Deputy Mayor, Committee Chairs, Deputy Chairs and various Council representatives representation positions to external bodies and internal bodies in the organisation. Each councillor has had the opportunity to nominate themselves for these positions and as discussed last week I will also accept nominations moved from the floor today for any of these positions. If a nomination is moved from the floor I will need it to be seconded in accordance with the uh, process for dealing with motions. This can of course be preceded by a foreshadowed motion. For each appointment decision I am proposing that my process will be to confirm the total number of um, nominees to name the people who have been nominated for that position and where there is a contest, so there is more nominees than positions available, I will present uh, one motion at a time based on each nominee from feedback I have received from councillors in the last week. Um, nominated councillors are able to withdraw their nomination at any time to prevent a contest from going to the floor. I will now open the floor if you have a proposed alternative process from any councillors here today. Councillor Hall. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I I would like to forward an amendment uh, to the motion, and I believe the, the title of this amendment might need to be corrected. Uh, it's, a, it's just a motion because I've called okay. for motions from the floor, Councillor Hall. So do okay. you want to read, do you want to yes. speak to your motion so that you can move yes. it? Okay. Uh, I, would, I would like to forward that all nominees for contested positions be given a chance to speak prior to consideration by Council and that, that a vote be carried out by a secret ballot to nominate the preferred nominees. I believe this is worthwhile because this is a transparent process and I believe it's in the interest of the public to see this process. I also believe uh, that it is also uh, a, fair, a fair process and that this is the correct decision-making forum. So this should be the correct place for um, candidates to uh, speak to their, to their nomination for each position. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Councillor Hall has moved the motion. Does someone want to second the motion so we can move into discussion? Thank you, Councillor Heremeyer. Um, I had a hand up from Councillor Lane. Was that a question or a foreshadowed motion, Councillor? Um, just on this motion, Mr Mayor, um, the issue I have is if we're going to be transparent, then I believe a secret ballot is not a transparent process and that it should be a show of hands. In the interest of community um, knowledge and knowing how we're actually supporting our city, I think a show of hands as we vote in every other uh, part of the meeting is probably essential to showing that we are in fact transparent. Are you foreshadowing a motion for an alternative way to resolve this matter, Councillor Lane? So Councillor Lane has proposed an amended motion. I'll go back to the mover. Are you open to that amendment or do you want to discuss your motion first? I'm, I'm open for it to be put to council uh, to test whether or not they are comfortable uh, for uh, an, a non-secret ballot. I prefer secret ballot because that aligns more closely to the Australian democratic system. Thank you, Councillor Hall. I'll now open the floor to discussion on your motion and then I'll move to Sorry, an amendment. I'll get to you in a second. I'll, I'll open the floor to discussion on your motion and then we'll move, which can include a rebuttal from Councillor Lane and then um, we'll move to a vote after discussion has been resolved. Councillor Lane, do you want to speak first? And I saw two other hands, who were they? It was Councillor Bennon and 
Councillor Bannon, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, in every other chamber in Australia, um, in a state level and a federal level, votes are actually taken in public. They're not taken in private. So um, it's not a adhering to the Australian standard. So when a, a vote comes up on anything in the Australian federal parliament or in the state parliaments, it's a show of hands. There is uh, people to count those votes and it is a very open and transparent system. And I think that's the system we should have here today. Thank you, Councillor Lane. Councillor Bannon, then Councillor Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to agree with you. You're the most experienced in it. I don't see anything transparent about a secret ballot in any way, shape or form. Thank you, Councillor Bannon. Councillor Murphy. I just want to note that in the discussion of these papers, and is written here, that this um, ballot can be done by either way, by open voting or a secret ballot, as required by the Local Government Act of 2009. So either way is quite possible to be done. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Wilcox. I am okay with either way. However, I am very aware that there are 13 of us sitting in this room that are about to make a decision on the position of Deputy Mayor. And I would be concerned that some people would feel under undue influence on, or under duress with 13 of us with hands in the air. Thank you, Councillor Wilcox. Councillor Lane, you want to respond to that? Mr Mayor, we're paid to actually make those decisions and whether we make them in the public system or in a private ballot, we're actually paid to make those decisions. So if anyone feels under undue pressure, they should actually speak up prior to actually casting their ballot and remove themselves from the ballot if that's the case. Thank you, Councillor Lane. Councillor Amara, then I'll put myself on the list. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I stand today to speak on process. For years, we've conducted the Deputy Mayor ballot through a secret ballot in a council meeting like this. Now, there's been mentions of changing that process. If we want to change the process, we should see if there's support for the status quo. The precedent is that we conduct a secret ballot. We should follow that precedent until a vote is clear that we choose not to follow that precedent anymore. So we should vote on whether or not we want a secret ballot. And then once that decision is made, we should follow it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haramaya. I'll put myself in, then we can have a go, Councillor Lane. So I agree with Councillor Haramaya. That's why I opened the floor to, to test the motion. I knew that Councillor Hall wanted to test the secret ballot. Um, it should be noted that the secret ballot is not mentioned anywhere in the Local Government Act or in our meeting code. It was a decision of the previous mayor, which I supported, because that's what the mayor wanted. My preferred process is either through cycling through the the, the nominees to see who has majority support or a show of hands. But I agree that it's worth testing whether or not the status quo still has the support of the majority, and I'll support the position of the majority once it's tested. I've got Councillor Lane and then Councillor Bradley. Thanks very much, and I appreciate Councillor Haramaya's comments. Councillor Murphy said it quite clearly that the report says the option of an open and transparent ballot or a secret ballot. Thank you, Councillor Lane. Councillor Bradley. I'm curious, I wasn't here on Monday when a secret ballot was done, but I'm curious how come the change from Monday to here? Because Councillor Hall said he wanted to test the status quo. And so I sought feedback from councillors on Monday so I could inform which motion I wanted to put forward first. Councillor Hall accepted that feedback but said that he'd prefer to test the, the status quo to see if councillors preferred that or if they're happy with an alternative. So that's where we got to today. Councillor Russell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I wish to um, question what the um, the benefit uh, to the to the room and to the city for the changing the the status quo process from previous votes similar. Improve transparency so everyone can see where the support lies because there is no transparency in a secret ballot. The word secret tells you that. Um, just to follow on from that, thank you. Um, what is the benefit to people knowing where the vote comes from? So in lo one of the local government principles is transparency. And so as Councillor Lane said, in every other government that meets and makes decisions, you do so in an open forum without, without any secrecy. So a secret ballot hides who votes for who. There's benefits to that. I understand that as Councillor Wilcox pointed out, some people may feel pressure. Um, I think in this place, there's no need to feel that pressure. We often make difficult decisions and we do it by raising our hands and councillors are quite resilient and are used to that process. But as Councillor Heremeyer outlined and as Councillor Hall has moved, it is worth testing the status quo first to see if there's still support for it and I will support what the majority does. So I've got 
Murphy and then Bradley. Sorry, did you want to respond? Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that I, um, I took from your response what the benefit is. Transparency. Okay. Murphy and then Bradley and then I'll wrap it up unless we're actually contributing new things to the discussion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. We currently have a motion on the board that um, clearly states via secret ballot, could we please test that motion first and then go from there? I will test it as soon as I speak to Councillor Brad let Councillor Bradley speak. Yes, I was going to ask for the motion to be taken. Excellent. So I have a mover for the motion, which was Councillor Hall. I had a second for motion, which was Councillor Heremeyer. I'll put the motion to the floor. All councillors in favour, please raise your hand. Keep them up high so the meeting clerks can see who has supported it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The motion has been carried. I'll cycle through each member of council so they can state their position. Councillor Bradley. Four. Against, I like transparency. Four, and I also like transparency. Thank you. Councillor is for or against? You can give a reason if you abstain. Please don't add comments to every time you vote. Against. Thank you. Four. Four, Mr Mayor. Against. Four. Against. Four. 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 And I'm against. Thank you, councillors. We'll now move to a process of testing all contested positions from 6.2 onwards via a secret ballot as determined by the majority of councillors. Um, there will be a chance for any nominee in a contested ballot to speak for up to two minutes before the vote is taken. We'll now move on to item 6.2. Find my spot in my script again. Excuse hey, me, Mr go. Mayor. Excuse me, Mr Mayor. Councillor um, Hall. Could I ask that there be allowance for a bit longer for the Deputy Mayor speech? I believe um, it is a different context to that role, so it may require more than two minutes. How long would you propose? How long have we previously given Deputy Mayors to speak? Five minutes. Uh, could we allow uh, seven minutes? I'll stick with the precedent of five minutes unless you actually want to push hard for a seven minute speech. That means we'll be sitting here for 21 minutes while the three nominees speak. Five minutes, but allowance for leeway. Uh, if you're they can ask for an extension if they desperately need it. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Um, we'll now move on to item 6.2, which is the consideration of appointment of Deputy Mayor. I have received three nominees for this position, Councillor Bennon, Councillor Hall and Councillor Wilcox. Those nominees are in order of, an alphabetical order of their surname and they will speak in that order and then we will put it to secret ballot and a resolution will be formed based on the outcome of that secret ballot. Councillor Bennon, would you like to speak first, please? Up to five minutes. I won't take five minutes, Mr Mayor. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. I put my hand up for Deputy Mayor because I think I have a broad skill set which can bring some new things to the role. I believe from having my own business for over 25 years gives me great insight into business, especially dealing with staff. I just deal with disaster management experience. I've offered to do that with people, disaster management, because I'm calm and obviously I'm a firefighter. I can deliver the message and run the things on the ground to help the councillors. My experience in events, been a professional promoter for over 30 years. I can help councillors with events, I can do pop-up events, there's numerous ways I can get them to, to their community and to get better outlooks for their community. Also with roads and civil and construction, I've done that for over 30 years or 35 years. So I believe I can be a, a bridge to that. I believe I offer skill sets that I can support a councillor in any way they need me to do and if it helps their community get better outcomes. All the councillors are very capable, so I want to be clear to the community that I'm not an um, escalation point. I'm not the escalation point against the council. I'm there, there to support the council if they need it. I believe I have a great relationship with the current mayor, and I can be his right-hand man and, and go where he needs me to go. And also with media, I've over 30 years' experience in media, so there's not a problem in any media that comes my way. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bannon. Councillor Hall? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Today, my council cohort, you and I stand with a difficult decision. We are all in the room and we are all accounted for. We are in the correct decision-making forum. Here and now is the right place and the right time to decide who will be your next deputy mayor. We all here are great candidates for deputy mayor, but your choices are the ones who have nominated. 
Last night, I worked very hard on this speech, well past my bedtime, thinking what to say. I have been in this situation before. This is my second attempt for the role of Deputy Mayor. You now have three councillors in front of you today, <coughs> all good councillors, similar in some ways, but different in others. You need to decide today which councillor best represents our council cohort. Who is the best ambassador to not only support our Mayor, John Raven, but also represent you each as an individual. As Deputy Mayor, everything we do, everything we say reflects back on our, on our cohort, our relationship to our community and our relationship with each other and every councillor in this room will be put under a microscope by the media and our residents. I believe the best candidate for this role should be on a good footing with each and every councillor in this room. And I hope in your opinion that I am that person. In my previous attempt to Deputy Mayor, I stood in competition with a lady that I greatly admire and respect, Councillor Laurie Kerensky. She won by a good number of votes and I accepted defeat graciously. I sought the answers as to why I lost. The reason why is because she was the better candidate. She had proven her worth by her history of hard work, doing the right thing. She attended every meeting possible. She went to every council event and she fostered every good relationship with every councillor and she maintained an impeccable reputation. That is what it takes to represent the cohort as a deputy mayor. I understand there is only so much I can promise to the other councillors to gain the role of deputy mayor. I could promise support with big events, more publicity for each councillor, connections with the entertainment industry. I could go on and on, but I cannot promise you those things. I can, however, promise you hard work. I can promise you attendance. I can promise you unbiased. I can, I can promise you empathy and compassion and prof professionalism because those are the things I've worked hard over the previous term to develop. These are the things that Laurie Kerensky beat me on previously in the Deputy Mayor role. The returning councillors in this room know me. You know I work hard on everything that we do. You know I am a team player. There have been decisions we have made in the past that I was completely against. But when the cohort voted for it, I supported it 100%. I even attended the events for their premieres for them because that is what it takes to be a team player. You need to choose the person here today who you know will do that as your deputy mayor. We need to accept that the mayor has big plans for this city and he will be out and about so we may not see him in the building as often. So we need someone who will be here to cover for him when he is away. Someone who has demonstrated attendance in the past, and someone who has always been prepared to stay back late to get the job done, regardless of what was happening in their own personal life. The person who is prepared to make sacrifices for the greater good. All the returning councillors here and council staff know I already do this on a regular basis. I'm quite often the last to leave each day, and that means I'll be here for you should you need my help to support as the Deputy Mayor. My one ask of you is that you choose your Deputy Mayor today in the same way you would choose anyone for any role, on the basis of the history of their past effort and work and not on their promises. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hall. You only needed four minutes. You did great. Councillor Wilcox. Thank you so much, Mr Mayor. Um, I would like to thank my fellow councillors for allowing the consideration of my nomination for the position of Deputy Mayor. However, I would like to formally withdraw from the process. Thank you, Councillor Wilcox. You only needed 10 seconds. You did very well. Um, councillors, I now open the floor to ask any questions of the two remaining candidates. If any questions, if any councillors have questions for them, there being none, we'll now move to secret ballot. There are two nominees on the ballot paper. Yes. Because one councillor has just withdrawn, there are currently three nominees. If you vote for Councillor Wilcox, that vote will be informal. The CEO will walk you through the process. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So there's, 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 there's now two uh, nominees. Uh, you'll be handed a green slip of paper to uh, tick the name of your preferred candidate on it. It'll be collected in a box ballot box. It'll be counted outside by the Director of Corporate Governance, uh, Director of Organisational Services and the Corporate Governance Manager uh, in the Woodridge Room to ensure accuracy, and then we'll come back with the preferred candidate for a motion. The meeting of has been Please stand by.
for residents watching at home, this ballot box is one of the old ones that council used to use when council ran local government elections. So there's a whole bunch of them in the democracy ball downstairs. Thank you, Councillor Lane, for your transparency. <laughs>
Thanks very much, um, Mr Mayor. I'm just curious as to the order. When we do committees and when we do reports, city planning followed by infrastructure, followed by governance, followed by lifestyle is the usual practice. Is there a reason why that's different or is it just because it's alphabetical? It, it is just in alphabetical order. Um, and the order of committees could change depending on the, the meeting schedule that we propose. Uh, so that's just alphabetical order. Thank you, Councillor Amai. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I have a question for the council officers. I have uh, the agenda for this meeting in front of me today. It may be outdated. Um, the only uh, reference to a motion such as this in my uh, agenda that has been circulated is a recommendation that states, quote, that in the event the circumstances set out in section 1652 of the Local Government Act of 2009 arise, that councillor XXX be appointed as acting mayor. I presume that councillor XXX refers to an individual that the organisation uh, left to the councillors to appoint. Did the idea of having the chairs based on an alphabetical order be circulated in an agenda? No, the agenda item you have, have for me to go. Um, thanks, it was through, through the chair. Um, no, the, the agenda item refers to a, a, a particular potential councillor to be appointed as uh, acting mayor. Um, in, the, in the event that um, that person may not be available, it doesn't, it doesn't provide for a further person. Um, uh, through a range of discussions, uh, this you know, alternative resolution was, is proposed. The, the council can either move the officer recommendation or can move an alternative recommendation if um, the council thinks that's a better process um, for having an alternate mayor in, in the unlikely event that both the mayor and deputy mayor are not available. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you, Mr CEO, for the answer. I believe that we have an opportunity to fix a problem. And the problem is that if the mayor and if the deputy mayor aren't available, we need someone to chair a temporary meeting until we can figure out who to fill in those positions. Now, this proposes to have that temporary acting mayor in these unique circumstances to be based on these four committee chairs on an alphabetical order. Now, I believe that that's not the best approach because it doesn't actually fix the problem. There could be a circumstance where you have the mayor, the deputy mayor, and all of these four chairs not available, yet you still have quorum of council. So instead of basing it on an alphabetical order of committee chairs, which doesn't actually fix the issue, Let's take the opportunity to fix this once and for all, take a more equitable approach, and have the rotation based on councillors, just on alphabetical order. I think that actually fixes the issue. It provides less division when it comes to the role of a committee chairperson, and it makes sure that we'll never be in the scenario that's set forward in section 1652. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haramaya. I'll take that as amendment to the motion. We don't have a mover yet. So would someone like to move this motion so it can be amended? Or moved as is? Is that a question or a moving? No, I'll move it. Thank you, Councillor Wilcox. Councillor Wilcox has moved the motion on the screen. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Lane. Now the motion has been moved. Would you like to propose an amendment, Councillor Heremeyer? Yes, Mr Mayor, as, as mentioned. While the meetings team changes it to be councillors in alphabetical order of their surname, I'll let Council Wilcox as the mover speak. Can we vote on this? First? Would you like to test it first? Yes, I'd like to test this one first, thank you, before the um, amendment. No problems. Councillors, there has been a motion moved. You can speak to the motion. Would anyone like to speak to the motion before I put it to the vote? Do you want to speak to it, Councillor um, Wilcox as the mover? Councillor Bennett would like to speak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm supportive of Councillor Hiram. I just think that there's a bit of confusion around committee chairs, as in like a ministerial role, which they clearly aren't. I think the fact that if you go alphabetically, I think if we just do the chairs, it gives a perception that the chairs are above councils, which they are definitely not. And I think if you just go alphabetically, it gives every council the chance and shows that we are sharing it and we are all equal. Thank you, Councillor Bannon. Councillor Heremeyer. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The meeting code dictates that once a motion has been amended, the amended motion gets priority when it comes to voting. That's set out in section 7.8 of the meeting code. We have to follow the meeting code. It's the rule book for this meeting. So being, uh, being that that's the rules, we should vote on um, the amended motion. If that fails, then we have the original motion to vote on.
but that's the actual process under the meeting code. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Haramire. So I can only accept an amendment if it doesn't substantially change the motion. It does substantially change the motion because it changes the number of people in the order that it gets done in. So it'll have to be put up as a, an alternative motion if this one fails. Thank you. So I will put the motion to the floor unless any councillors wish to discuss it further. Councillor Wilcox has moved and Councillor Lane has seconded. All those in favour, please raise your hand. That has been carried. That has not been carried. Sorry, you don't know. Like, hands up if you voted for it, so I can see who it is. One, two, three, four, five. The motion has not been carried. I'll go around the room to determine how each councillor voted. Division one. Against. Two. Four. Three. Against. Four. Four. Five. Against. Six. Against. Seven. Against. Eight. Against. Nine. Against. Ten. Against. Eleven. Four. Twelve. Four. Mayor is four. Thank you, councillors. Now, Councillor Heremeyer has an alternative motion, which has now been prepared by the, by the meetings team while we had that discussion, and it will be displayed on the screen shortly. I take it you want to move that motion, Councillor Heremeyer? That in the event circumstances set out in section 1652 of the LGA 2009 arise, council resolves to appoint an acting mayor. In these circumstances, the acting mayor will be filled by a councillor on rotation in alphabetical order of surname. Are you happy with that motion, Councillor Heremeyer? Are you seeking to second that motion, Councillor Bennon? Would you like to speak to the motion, Councillor Heremeyer? All those in favour, please raise your hand. That has been carried with the exception of... You're up? Okay. Thank you, councillors. I'll go down the room to see how you vote. Division one. Four. Two. Okay. Three. Four. 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 Five. Four. Six. Four. Seven. Four. Eight. Four. Nine. Four. Ten. Four. Eleven. Against. Twelve. Against. And the mayor is for. Thank you, councillors. We have now resolved how to appoint an acting mayor in extremely rare circumstances, and we've got a process that is bulletproof because it, we will always have another councillor appointed. We will now move on to item 6.3, which is committee appointments. I'll ask that the motion be displayed on the screen. To begin with committee appointments, we will have to determine the terms of reference for the committees so we know what committees that we have. I'll hand over to the CEO to discuss the report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So item 6.3, committee appointments, April 2024. So there's a, a proposal in the report for four standing committees plus a special budget committee, so a total of five uh, committees. Um, the report attaches a terms of reference uh, reflecting that structure. Um, uh, what we are proposing is that we move the structure uh, first uh, to put in place those five committees, then uh, move to a, a, a process to appoint the chairs and deputy chairs of those committees. And then at the end of that process, we adopt an, an amended version of those terms of reference, which includes the names of the chairs and the deputy chairs. Um, so it's a three-stage process, if you like. Um, so this, to be clear, is the this first committee appointments. It says committee appointments there because it refers to the name of the, the agenda item. But the first uh, um, three items of the recommendations in the report only relates to the adopting the terms of reference to allow you to get on with the business of putting chairs and chairpers, deputy chairpersons in. So that's what you're voting on in the first instance in this case. Thank you, Mr. CEO. I propose that we adopt the terms of reference first before we consider the nominations for chairperson and deputy chairperson roles. I will therefore move a motion to adopt the structure of standing committees of four committees with one special budget committee as proposed by the report. Would someone like to second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Stemp. Or would anyone like to discuss the motion? All those in favour, please raise your hand. That has been carried unanimously. The motion has been carried. Thank you. Sorry, you're going to be contesting first. Yes, I will. Right. Um, thank you. I'll now call. We have received nominations for all uh, committee chair positions. There is one chair where there is more than one nomination and only one position available. That is for the chairperson of the City Infrastructure Committee. I will now move to a contested ballot where both nominees for that position get to speak for up to two minutes. Um, this is also a secret ballot. We resolve them all to be secret ballot, Councillor Bennon. Um, the, we'll now move to speeches in alphabetical order of last name. 
Councillor Bannon and Councillor Wilcox are the two nominees for this position. Does anyone withdraw their nomination before we get into speeches? No, excellent. Councillor Bannon, please speak first. You have two minutes. Curse my parents for giving me their last name, Mr Mayor. The, um, I put my hand up for City Infrastructure Chair for multiple reasons. It also it goes in sole with the fact that I put my hand up for Deputy Mayor of the City. I do, I'm glad that no one judged me on my first term. The first term I didn't. I said I wouldn't chair, I said I wouldn't be Deputy Mayor. I just wanted to get my feet wet, get to know the staff and see where I sat in the building and then go from there. Obviously I've changed that now, I'm a second term councillor. I believe I'd be good at infrastructure because it's what I've done for 30 years. Like from, from civil to construction, I know I'd like to back in my hand. Any councillor can learn their craft. Like I'm not a big governance guy, but I can guarantee I could learn it. I have a great relationship with the staff and I have multiple councillors that come to me to explain it in their terms so that I can get results across the board before things happen. I want to be that liaison between councillors and between staff when it comes to some of the road issues to explain them. But mainly because it is a, it's a, one of the best things I'm at is the construction industry and I think it'd be, I'd be an asset to, to doing it. Thank you, Councillor Bannon. Councillor Wilcox, would you like to speak? Thank you very much. Um, I would again like to thank my fellow councillors for allowing me to nominate for the Chair of Infrastructure. I think I have the experience um, and the now to also do the job, but I would like to now formally withdraw. Thank you, Councillor Wilcox. We now have only one nomination for the role of City Infrastructure Chair, so there's no reason to run a ballot. Um, that means all um, committee chair appointments are uncontested. Would any councillors like to nominate at this time? That being the case, the a motion will be placed on the screen for the appointments of four committee chairs. We will then move to deputy chairs separately. Just take it longer to type it up. I'm sure. Being nice. Okay. <laughs> You're good. Keep going. Councillors, the excellent. So, councillors, before you is the committee appointments, and the meetings team has been very efficient and have placed the uncontested deputy chairpersons into this motion as well. For city governance, we have the chairperson as Councillor Murphy with deputy chairs Councillor Jackson and Bradley. For city mm. infrastructure, we have Councillor Bennett as the chair with the deputy chair being Councillor St Ledger. For City Lifestyle, we have Councillor Hall as the Chair and Councillor Russell as the Deputy Chair. For City Planning, Economic Development and Environment, we have Councillor Stemp as the Chair with Councillors Russell and Councillor Lane. Did you want to remove your nomination for that position still? Can you please remove Councillor Lane? Apologies, meetings team. And then for Special Budget Committee, we have the Chairpersons being, by default, the Governance Chairs and Deputy Chairs, which in this case is Councillors Murphy as the Chair and Councillors Jackson and Bradley as the Deputy Chairs. And once Councillor Lane's nomination has been removed. I will put the motion to the floor as outlined on the screen. Would someone like to move that motion? Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Second the motion. Thank you, Councillor Hall. All those in favour, please raise your hands. Thank you, Councillors. That motion has been carried unanimously. Councillors, we will now move on to item 6.0. Oh. Councillors will now adopt the amended terms of reference to include the, de the chairpersons and deputy chairpersons in the terms of reference for those committees. There is a motion on the screen to achieve exactly that. Would someone like to move that motion? Thank you, Councillor Murphy, seconded by Councillor Hall. All those in favour, please raise your hand. That has been carried unanimously. The motion has been carried. Thank you. Now I can move on to item 6.3. I'll just let the meeting team catch up because I went too fast. I apologise. 6.4, yes.
ready for me to proceed? <coughs> okay. Councillors, you tabled the proposed deputies and chairs. We'll now need to adopt them as the terms of reference, which will be on the screen in a moment. Thank you, meetings team. The council adopts the terms of reference as attached to the report titled Committee Appointments, April 2024, with the inclusion of chairpersons and deputy chairpersons resolved by council on the 10th of April 2024. Would someone like to move that motion? Thank you, Councillor Bannon. Seconded by Councillor Hall. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Congratulations, you have appointed your chairs and chairpersons to your committees. We'll now move on to item 6.4, which is the calendar of local government meetings. I refer to item 6.4 and invite the CEO to speak to his report. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so you've now adopted all your, all your, chair, all your committees. Uh, this report presents the adoption of a calendar of meetings for the balance of 2024 for all of those meetings, uh, but also including audit and risk committee. Um, so uh, it's now a matter just for the council to adopt that attachment. Thank you, Mr. CEO. There is a motion on the screen that the calendar of meetings specifying the day and time for meetings of ordinary council and each of the standing committees as attached to the report titled Calendar of Local Government Meetings April 2024 be adopted. Would someone like to move that motion, please? Thank you, Councillor Bannon. Would someone like to second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Hall. All those in favour, please raise your hand. That has been carried unanimously. The motion has been carried. We'll now move on to item 6.5, which is the appointment of councillor representatives. Uh, for this matter, we have some. We currently have some contested um, positions, unless councillors wish to increase the number of appointees to each role. The places where I have contested positions are for LJQ, um, Local Government Association of Queensland um, representatives, and for Comsec leveraging 2032 Working Group. Councillors, I'm in your hands. Um, would you prefer to move the full number of nominees, which is four for LJQ, being councillors Russell, St Ledger, Wilcox and Bradley, or would you prefer to run a secret ballot to determine who the two nominated positions are, as we have done historically? Councillor Lane and then Councillor Bradley. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Is there a cost associated to the ratepayers to have four instead of two for LGOQ? There is. If you send all four delegates, there'll be a cost of attending the conference and there'll be a cost, if it's a regional conference, of travel and accommodation. Councillor Bradley. Thank you. Through the chair. Um, I believe on Monday um, a feedback. feedback vote, whatever you want to call it, was done and my name was not supported, so I'm going to withdraw my... Thank you, Councillor Bradley. I now have three nominees. Would anyone like to, would any councillors like to move that we appoint all three or would someone like to withdraw? Councillor Wilcox? I'm happy to appoint all three if that's the support of the majority. 
So you'd like to move that all three be adopted for that one? Would someone like to second that motion? They're going to have to write that motion up. Thank you, Councillor Hall. So that there'd be three nominees for the LJQ representatives to be done. I'll test it on the floor and then it will become part of the full report if that's the case. And if not, we'll run a secret ballot. Councillor St. Ledger. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'm happy to withdraw my nomination if it's going to be a cost to the ratepayer. And as we've been discussed, that if we want to go, we can nominate to go at our own cost. So just leave it at the two, if that's easier. Thank you, Councillor St. Ledger. I now only have two nominees. So that those two nominees being Councillor Russell and Councillor Bullcox will be added to the report. That leaves us Comsec leveraging 2032 working group. Would you like to have two nominees for that position as well? Councillor Bullcox would. Um, would anyone else, and Councillor Stemp would as well, or would you like to withdraw, Councillor Stemp? I'm happy to withdraw unless two petitions are available. The, it's not specified. Okay. So we can totally, we can appoint two people yep. and let Comsec do it. I'm order. happy for Councillor Wilcox. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Stemp. Councillor Lane, did you have a question? No, I was just asking whether there was a cost associated with an additional person on it. Not a significant one. They would just be attending the meeting. Um, but it's not a regional meeting. It's a, it's a local meeting. Um, the councillors I now have for the councillor representative positions, I have the same number of nominees as I do positions. With the exception of the Australian Local <laughs> Government Women's Association, um, there is one uh, position available. Would any councillors like to nominate themselves for the, the vacant appointment? It's not mandatory. No? Excellent. Then I'll keep talking while the meetings team puts their motion. I have to have an alternative for Councillor Mayors? Don't have to. But you're recommending one? No. No, leave, no. leave it out. That one. No, we don't need to. So all the others are covered. Thank you Sorry. very much. A motion will appear on the screen shortly with the um, nominations for each position, which I'll read through to buy them some time. So for the Australian Local Government Association, I have Councillor Heremeyer. For the Australian Local Government Women's Association, I have Councillors Wilcox and Russell. For the Local Government Association of Queensland, I have Councillors Russell and Wilcox. For Council of Mayors South East Queensland, I have Mayor Raven. For Comsec Leveraging 32 Working Group, I have Councillor Wilcox. Comsec Waste Working Group, I have Councillor Stemp. Comsec Resilient Rivers, I have Councillors Jackson and Bradley. Audit and Risk Committee, I have Councillors Heremeyer and Hall. Local Government Manage, uh, Local Disaster Management Group Deputy Chair, I have Councillor Lane. Southern Regional Roads and Transport Group. I have Councillor Bennon, Road Safety and Active Transport Chairperson, Councillor Stem, and Road and Active Transport Advisory Group member, Councillor Bradley. Uh, Road Safety and Active Transport Advisory Group. You nominated the other day. No, no, the Councillor Stem's the chair. One more person could nominate for that if you like, and you could also nominate a group member. Um, a councillor member for that's not the deputy chair for the local government disaster management group if you wanted to. Up to you. And I think I've killed enough time for the meetings team to have their motion ready. All good. It's a big motion. Councillors, you have a motion on the screen. I'll give you some time to read through. I am happy with being my workshop, the mayor, but I, it's okay. I'll just let you fix that one up while we work, while we go through. Um, the names all appear appropriate. They look great. Wonderful. Councillor Stemp. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, just a question. If for some reason someone can't attend one of those meetings, what happens? It, do we just not have a representative there? Like, is that how it yeah. would work? Okay, in the, in the case where there's only one. That's right. And so the only ones where that has ramifications are, the biggest one is ComSec, because it's a board member position. So usually the deputy mayor would be the alternative member. You could add that if you wanted to be 
um, an abundance of caution, which is what we did last term. Um, but the deputy mayor can attend in the mayor's place. They just can't vote as a member of the board because they won't be signed on to Comsec. Beyond that, the others don't have a significant impact. There we go. I'm now his worship. Thank you. Councillors, when you're ready, you can, you've got a question, Councillor Wilcox. Is LGAQ on there? I see ALGA and ALGUA, but I can't see LGAQ. Nope, it's not. Well spotted. Unless it's down the bottom. No. It should be under ALGA. It's not. I assume it got pulled out because it was going to have a, a secret ballot. Yeah. Thank you, councillors. We now have LJQ on the board. It's not bold, but that's okay. That's an administrative change we can make later. Um, councillors, is, are you happy to move the motion as displayed on the screen? It's right at the top. It's just not bolded, so it doesn't stand out the same way. It has it duplicated. For, and just if you just remove the second repetition of, yeah. I'm cool with being a workshop. Councillor's LJQ has now been resolved as bolded and no duplication. Can you just scroll down through the list for us, please, ladies, so we can double check? Perfect. Councillors, would someone like to move the motion as displayed on the screen? Thank you, Councillor Hall, seconded by Councillor Stem. All those in favour, please raise your hand. That has been carried unanimously. The motion has been carried. Councillors, that now brings us to item 6.6, .6, which is the appointment of Councillor Advisors 2024. Are you speaking to this one, Mr CEO? Uh, just briefly, Mr Mayor. So, um, in the last quadrennium, 2004 to, uh, 2020 to 2024, um, the office of the mayor had uh, an advisor position allocated to it uh, by council in the same way as um, each councillor has an advisor. Um, under the legislation, the mayor's office is allowed up to three advisors um, to be allocated. Uh, the mayor's office at that time also had um, three other support staff uh, associated with it, so a total of four in the office. The uh, report here presents three options. Um, uh, one is the status quo, uh, which is an advisor and three council officers to support the mayor's office. Um, one is, uh, option two is effectively still cost neutral, but swaps the employment status of uh, two of those people. So instead of having one advisor and three staff, it is three advisors and one staff. Um, so effectively cost neutral. And a third option, which adds one additional staff member three advisors and two staff members, uh, two staff members. Uh, so they're the, th they're the three options. The, the additional cost uh, for option three is in the order of $140,000 for the additional staff members once you take into consideration the movement of levels. Um, so that's what's presented in the report. 
Thank you, Mr. CEO. I have a question. So there's three options presented. The first option is status quo, which we would normally test first. Is there a reason why you're not supportive of status quo because the chief of staff would remain an internal officer? I know it's outlined in the port report, but for the benefit of the floor. Um, the, the, the report doesn't select an option. The report is um, XXX on the, on the selected option. So it's a matter for this council to determine which, which option. Um, uh, it is, I suppose, my preference that the, the, the mayor's chief of staff being directed on a day-to-day -day basis by the mayor on a range of administrative and non-administrative actions be an advisor role rather than a staff member role given the inability for councils or ors or mayors to direct uh, staff members directly. Thank you, Mr CEO. Um, my proposal is to put forward uh, my preferred option first, but councillors can move whatever, they don't have to support the moving of that motion, they could move whatever they chose to. Um, I'll, I'll move the motion and see if someone wants to second it so I can speak to it, and then I'm happy to take questions. So I'll, I'll move option three as the preferred motion that will go into the, as a preferred option that will go into the report. Would someone like to second that? Thank you, Councillor Bannon. I'll take the opportunity to speak and then I'll, I'll open the, as the mover and open the floor to anyone else who wishes to speak or ask questions. Um, the existing structure has served the previous mayor well, but he was very focused on bringing the councillor cohort, who is nine of you, as you all remember, were first term councillors. He was focused on bringing you up to speed and, and making sure that we cleaned up the um, the internal challenges that we had after administration. As those are internally focused goals, it was easy for the Mayor's Office to rely on internal resources and it made sense to do that. And, fo and focusing on supporting the first term councillors with the help of the Deputy Mayor. That was very successful and every, uh, like that process was very successful and the support provided to the first term councillors um, pro proved to be a success because every single councillor who put up their hand for re-election has now been returned to office. So that effort was worth it and it has paid off. Um, now though, the focus for this term has to be external as we need to bring opportunities to our city for the benefit of our residents. I promised the people of Logan that I would improve Logan's reputation, bring more investment and jobs to our city and do better community consultation and engagement. The team I want to bring on will be able to support all of us as we work together towards those goals in uplifting the reputation of our city. We don't just want to look at the immediate issues of today, we want to be able to strategically work over the longer term to, for projects that will benefit the people of Logan. To make that happen, I need the support of capable and qualified staff with the skills and experience to deliver on those commitments. These advisors can provide specialty policy advice, community engagement, communication skills and executive support to make sure that the Mayor's Office can serve the entire city and serve it well. I'm seeking your support today for one additional role for the impact of $140,000 to the, to the budget for the Office of the Mayor. Um, I would seek the flexibility that the roles of each advisor while their, um, while their position be outlined and their pay point be outlined, that those roles of what those advisors be have some flexibility so I can appoint who is needed to fill gaps in my office as the need arises. I open the floor for questions and consideration. Councillor Murphy, then Councillor Wilcox. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and I love that you have the passion to drive our city forward, but I do have a question with regards to the extra staff person. Um, in the report here, it says the total cost is, is changed to approximately 140000 which you have stated. It also says, however, it is understood that the extra person wouldn't be filled until later this calendar year, um, reducing the initial outlay. My question to you, Mr Mayor, is that can we um, address this extra staff person after the budget process at the end of the, th the financial year and then reevaluate? Because obviously we have a budget coming up. It is going to be um, a difficult budget for our, our residents and the cost of living factors, etc. And we will need to look at all costs associated with the expense of Logan City Council. I'm not saying that you don't need this position, but due to that extra bit of information that is currently here, saying that it'd be filled later in the calendar year, would it be possible to look at this position after the budget has been, been delivered? So that's the level five advisor position that you're talking about? Whichever one you need to do with regards to the 140,000. So the level five advisor position was the one I was proposing to delay until later into the year. I'm more than happy to do that through the budget. There will still be some budget impact by removing a level five advisor, which is approximately... So it's approximately $100,000 
cheaper to remove the level five advisor from the process now for a full calendar year. So there would still be a $40,000 difference. And I'm happy to accept that amendment that, to that the suggestion. That just wasn't s stated in there. So I'm just asking the question. Obviously, I'm thinking of our ratepayers and where the ratepayer money is going. And it had stated that, that um, we could look at it later in the year. I'm just asking the question. I'm more than happy to accept that amendment um, to remove the level five advisor. And good work, Madam Chair of Special Budget Committee. Um, Council Wilcox. Thank you. Uh, mine is on along the similar lines as well. Um, you know, I was going to ask how quickly you would fill it, but Councillor Murphy pointed that out. Um, I would prefer it if it actually went through the budget process and we put both positions in the budget process because, yes, you have an extra level five position, but you're also taking one advisor from a level six to a level eight. I don't understand why there's a difference in the need from a level six to a level eight. It's just to recruit somebody that has the skills that I need in the office and to be able to recruit them, that'll be the pay point that I've figured out it will attract the right uh, staff member. And again, um, because you're not going to fill especially that extra position, my preference would be to put the whole of that extra position, the 140000 through budget. <coughs> Putting the whole, so essentially doing a cost neutral option means that I have effectively off the, I'd have to look at the agenda again to confirm, but I only have one admin support officer and one advisor in addition to the, the chief of staff level advisor. So I would be operating with three staff, which is less than what was happening previously. And I have a significantly bigger workload than the previous mayor. Isn't it, if we were to go for one or two, there are four positions in both of those? No. So two, the cost neutral position that transitions advisors through, you have a manager level advisor, a level six advisor, and then an admin officer, is that right? So there's only three. There's a manager, no, there's a level six, there's a level five, and there's a level four. That's oh, they're all four fit positions. In there? Okay, cool. If there's four, I'm comfortable four. with it. Any further questions, councillors? I'll still put my motion to the floor first and let it fail or, or win on the votes. Any further questions? Councillor Bannon, Mr. wait, sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. Councillor Bannon, then Councillor Murphy. I think it's similar to when we employed the CEO, like you're at 0.01% of the budget. We're giving you the tools you need to go out and find the right person. The way I look at it is like a business. You've got, you know what your budget is, you mightn't spend it straight away, but that allows you to hunt the person that fills the role. And I believe it's hard to restrict the mayor if he's asking for something to run his office the way he wants to run it in his first term as the mayor of the city. I think it's, that's why I've seconded the vote. Thank you very much, Councillor Bannon. And at the moment, the office is understaffed and that is showing. Like the, the staff that are in there are under a lot of pressure and their workloads are huge. I believe I was receiving emails from the current executive assistant at 11.30 last night. Um, so being able to have the suggestion that Councillor Murphy had is a compromise that I'd be happy to um, accept if my motion doesn't get up and then I'm happy to test Councillor Wilcox's preference, which is the budget neutral one. Um, Murphy. Just, just for the record, Mr Mayor, I just want to clarify. So if we were to go ahead with option three presently, which is giving you those extra starts so that you can serve the city, um, up until this budget, we're looking at an extra cost of about $40,000. Is that correct? Yeah, because I want to point the level five uh, uh, advisor until after the budget anyway. Okay, thank you. Likely to be November or December at this point of time is my intention. Any further questions, councillors? I have a mover and a seconder for my motion, which is option three as it stands. I'll put that to the floor to vote now. If it fails, I'll cycle through the other options presented through the discussion. Uh, moved and seconded. All those in favour, please raise your hand for option three. That has been carried. Councillors, please cycle through the room to state your position. Councillor Division One. I abstained and I did state this the other day that historically it's always gone through the budget process. Thank you, Councillor Bradley. That reason will be recorded. Division two. For spend it wisely. Thank you, Division three. Against, spend it wisely. <laughs> Division four. Four. Division five. Four. Division six. Abstain, it should be done through the budget. Division seven. Four. Division eight. Against. Division nine. Four. Division 10. I'd like to abstain and, and again put this through the budget based on what we've got coming up. Thank you. Division 11. Against. Division 12. Four. 
and the Mayor is for. That has been carried 7-5. Seven, 7-6. Seven, seven, six. Seven, six. My maths is good. Um, thank you, councillors. That motion has been carried. Um, we now move into... We have no further reports on the agenda and we'll move into general business. Uh, we have no late reports to consider, sorry. We'll move into general business. As this is a new term, we'll start fresh with Division 1 and cycle our way through from there and because Division 1 has very kindly provided a general business item beforehand, which I appreciate. Thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor. Um, I said my congratulations and everything to everyone on, on Monday. So... Um, oh, sorry, last week. Um, but I do want to speak to this uh, suggested recommendation on the board, and there's a few reasons I want to speak to it. Um, many years ago, back 2015, the planning scheme changed to enable uh, the area that is close to the new Rochdale bus station to have higher density, and that matches what is on Brisbane City Council side as well. There are pre presently two high-rise residentials going up, which is within 500 metres of that bus station. And just recently, while we're in that caretaker mode, um, there was a uh, precinct called the Rochester South Plaza that officially opened. Well, actually, I don't think they've had the official open yet, but the businesses have started up, and that is in Centre Place, Corner Centre Place and Underwood Road. You may or may not remember um, during last term the, the intersection of... Um, sorry, I said Rochester Road. I meant to say Underwood Road. The intersection of Underwood Road and Centre Place is listed in our intersection upgrade list. Um, and that's based on that whole area is changing and evolving and increased pressure with traffic. The, many years ago, probably about uh, six, seven years ago, a parking strategy was done for Centre Place, which um, has two hour parking. Um, and in the, from that time, there have been a number of requests to have that altered, and each time the traffic engineer has come back and said, not yet. Um, it is also at one time, many years, I think it was before your time, Mr Mayor, um, when we were talking about possible parking metres, that, that um, area was actually put forward as a possible location for parking metres. Um, obviously, we're not discussing that today. But um, that the whole area is changing and it, there is increased pressure now on parking in within that area. There was increased pressure during um, development of that Rochester South Plaza, but even more so now that the businesses have opened up. Uh, the two-hour parking is not working. And late last year, um, I did foreshadow with... Division One traffic engineer that we need to have some sort of um, something done there, and n nothing has been brought forward. Hence, why I'm suggesting this. So it's in the public domain. There is uh, so much uh, community angst in relation and business angst in relation to that centre place. The businesses are actually taking their own traffic management by putting signs out the front saying. This, is, this parking is only for our business. So the intent of this is to resolve all that and it be in the public domain. So I'd like to move this recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Bradley. I just have a question for the Director of Roads. Do you mind coming up, Sylvia? Or do you want to answer from back there? I don't mind. Just want to understand why the traffic engineer hasn't come back with a, like an alternative suggestion. <laughs> You want to answer that one? I'll, I'll bring the director up anyway so he can... Yeah, it's better that the director responds. Director Trenker, thank you for coming forward. Um, so, Councillor Bradley says she's discussed this with the Division One traffic engineer in the past, but it, a solution hasn't been brought forward. Um, normally, in my experience as a divisional councillor, when exactly what Councillor Bradley's done, you would ask and then you would get a, a solution that would come forward, and then if that solution wasn't acceptable, you'd bring it to this forum. Is there a reason why Councillor Bradley's... Division One Traffic Engineer hasn't provided a solution yet? Absolutely. Um, the reason being that the development of the units 
uh, above with the commercials below has just been completed. So, you know, this is not something that has been uh, a long-term issue. There has been construction traffic issues along the way. Uh, so there has been a continual increase in traffic, but it is now, at the from the councillor's perspective, has now reached the point where it is impacting the other businesses, the existing businesses, uh, opposite the new development. Uh, and so uh, the council is looking for a new strategy that will potentially either limit parking even further in time, or you know one of the options might be parking med. Uh, but that's that's the reason for the request. Um, so to bring Thank it you. forward. Um, I can confirm it's not just the council that's concerned. I've seen emails from concerned residents who are, who are very frustrated with the situation and starting to take matters into their own hands, which we, we never want to see. Um, so in your opinion, Mr Director, because this sounds like it's urgent, would you agree, Councillor Bradley? What would be the fastest way to resolve this? Is it through this motion? Because I know that a report to committee can take six to eight weeks to come back, or is there a faster way to resolve this in the interest of Division One residents and Councillor Bradley? It depends on what options council, the level of the options council is prepared to go to. If it's purely a change in timing of the existing parking arrangements around that, that can be done uh, fairly quickly. However, if council wants to make a, or consider an option in regards to paid parking, that is a decision of council that would take longer and would require some community consultation. Even changing to parking times should require some community consultation. Um, so in looking at these options, I think this, this recommendation provides us the, the way forward, which is open and transparent, as the councillor said, and can engage the community in finding a solution that is acceptable. Thank you, Mr Director. I have one question to Councillor Bradley and then I'll go to Councillor Lane. Do you want parking metres to be considered as part of this report that comes back? Like, do you want all those options on the table, Councillor Bradley? I think all the options need to be on the table to be transparent, yes. And, and I agree that that needs a report. If it was just timing, I would make a different suggestion. Councillor Lane. Yeah, just out of curiosity, um, how would you adjust um, parking restrictions on the site, given that it's a local infrastructure program spend and we don't have a current budget to spend? I uh, the option is not necessary to look for providing a parking station somewhere because the low the road geometry is is constrained so i meant the signage yeah so it would just it would require the council to support changes in signs through the lip program uh, but that is something to be considered you know as we go along and it's changing perhaps 2 hour parking to 15 minute parking you know we have to consider all those options in consultation with the businesses. Thank you, Director Trenker. Any further questions, Councillor Lane? Um, Councillor Bradley has moved the motion. Would someone like to second the motion? Councillor Murphy has seconded the motion. Would anyone else like to have any questions? All those in favour, please raise your hand. That has been carried unanimously. The motion is carried. Thank you very much, Councillor Bradley. Uh, do you have any further GB you want to raise? Councillors, I'll cycle through each division in turn and see if you have any GB. Councillor Lane. Put the thing on and crank it up. So tomorrow the Family Place, um, which is one of our local establishments, is celebrating 10 years um, in our community providing services. And as one of the people that originally uh, ran the family place. Councillor Russell is well aware of their contributions, which have been phenomenal. They're running a free event tomorrow from 10 a.m. on North Road, so I encourage people to head along. Um, there are a number of events um, happening this week, and I made a promise to residents not to report after, but to actually tell them what's coming up. Um, so we've got Saturday morning the Kingston Butter Factory Cultural Precinct Markets. Uh, the entry is free, and there's plenty, plenty of products and food stalls. Um, on 10 a.m. on Saturday, the Myanmar um, Thingian Festival, which is a water festival, um, is occurring at Eridani Hall, at Eridani Park at Kingston. Um, there will be stalls to purchase fantastic foods, a lot of dancing, a lot of culture and a lot of fun. Um, uh, at 11 o'clock, we've got the Cambodian Community of Queensland um, Inc. Uh, celebrating their water festival. Um, so that should be a, a unique experience for them. And then from 12pm there's Eid celebrations happening at the Kingston Butter Factory 
to celebrate the end of um, Ramadan. Um, Sunday is my favourite thing with the global food markets, but I'd also like to shout out um, to our Islamic community a blessed Eid al-Fitr Mubarak. Um, it's the end of um, Eid and the end of fasting, and there'll be a lot of celebrations in the coming weeks, and I just want to wish them all well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lane. Councillor Russell. Not for me, thank you. Councillor St. Ledger. First chance. Um, I'd just like to say thank you, everyone, uh, for making our first week great. If you'd like to speak, stand up. Oh, there we go. Go on, I'm do very it. Tall. There it is, too tall. You need, yeah, that's <laughs> thank it. You, work. So I'd just like to say thank you, everyone, for making our first week in office really uh, enjoyable and uh, helping that transition. So thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you, Councillor St. Ledger. Councillor Jackson. Not for me, not for me, thank you. Councillor Hall. I yield my time. Councillor Fraser, Councillor Heremiah, Councillor Bennon. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I just want to thank the, the councillors for trusting me and being your Deputy Mayor. So I'll be a helping hand to you and not just the Mayor, but I really appreciate the support. Thank you, Councillor Bennon, Councillor Stemp, Councillor Wilcox, Councillor Murphy. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you, everyone, for your conduct in this meeting today. This is one of the most challenging meetings we have to run because there's lots of changes to recommendations. There's secret ballots. There's do we want secret ballots? Everyone was incredibly professional and you did yourselves proud and made the city proud of you as well. So thank you very much. I will close the meeting at 11.21. Enjoy your day, councillors.